Hey, so guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about that age old question, and that is, how should I charge people for my videography work? What's up guys, Brandon Washington here. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and also clicking on that little bell so you don't miss any future videos that I have coming up. But like I said before, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you should be charging people for your videography, filmmaking, or commercial type work. Now, this is a very heavy topic. There's a lot of stuff that goes involved into how you charge people. It's a big part of your business. So it's something that you should right off the bat know that you're gonna spend a little bit of time actually figuring out the right number. Now, a couple of little things to consider before we jump into how I personally do my pricing. First of all, my number will be different than your number because of a ton of different factors. So in this video, I'm gonna use very generic whole numbers to make it easy. But when you are actually thinking about your pricing, consider all the things I talk about in this video. And then once you come up with something, try it out and know that when you bring that to the market, so to speak, it may not work. And so it may cause you to have to tweak and readjust. So know that that is part of the process. It has taken me a while to kind of get down to my exact numbers. And I'll tell you, even today, my numbers are still not set in stone. I'm still working with them. And I think that's something that constantly happens until you're just so overwhelmingly desired that you can just, you know, you can live comfortably having a set number. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so the very first thing that I like to consider when pricing out my video projects is how much money do I physically want to take home at the end of each gig? This is something that is really, really important because in video projects that can have crazy different types of budgets and crazy different types of demands, it's very important to know how much money you actually want to physically pocket at the end of the job. Because with expenses going out to things like rentals or for props or for you know extras or models or whatever the extra little details are in each video it's very important to know how much money you want to take home because with without even realizing it it's very easy to spend up the entire budget and not even realize that there's no money left over to actually go in your pocket as take home cash so I'm gonna start right there with how do you decide how much money you actually wanna take home? All right, so the way I decide how much money I'm gonna take home is based on two different rates. I have what's called a half day rate and I have a full day rate. Now a half day rate is a shoot lasting up to four hours and then a full day rate is a shoot lasting up to eight hours. So basically what I've decided is I've picked a number and so for the sake of just easy understanding, let's say my full day rate is $100. There's no way my full day rate is actually $100. But let's say, for the sake of argument, my full day rate is $100. Well, that means for eight hours worth of work, I wanna make $100. Seems pretty fair. And if a client calls me and they say, hey, I want you to do a commercial shoot, and I say, cool, can we get it all done in a single day based off what their scope is, uh, based off their scope of work and what all they want done in the video, it sounds like we can shoot the whole thing in one day. So I let them know. Base price is $100. That is just to get me my gear to come out and shoot for that day. Now, this does not include editing. It's really important to remember that. This does not include editing. We're gonna cover editing in just a second. But you wanna have a base day rate. Now, sometimes you go out on a shoot and it doesn't take a full day. Like for example, let's say you're shooting like a small music video or even like a quick interview type set. Well, in these cases, I charge a half day rate. Now, using the model of $100 as my full day rate, for a half day rate, I would charge about 60. The reason why I actually charge a little bit more than half of my full day rate is because if you have a client who's kind of sitting on the fence, whether they want to bring you out for a half day or a full day, you're giving them a slight bit of a discount by actually bringing you out for a full day versus a half day. So for a half day rate, I will charge just a little bit more than my full day rate at half point, which would be $60. Now, the reason why I do it this way is because I don't, I mean, I know there are videographers out there who like to charge based on the gear that they bring out. So if they bring out a drone, they charge this much. If they bring out a 4K camera versus a non 4K camera, they bring out, you know, a different amount. 
I personally don't like limiting myself creatively with my tools. I've bought the gear so that I can use it to make the best videos possible. And if you create great videos, that's only gonna help promote your business. So personally, I don't like to charge by the gear. I just like to be able to bring all my gear out. That's why I have a set half day and full day rate. And that way I can go out and make the best videos possible using all the gear that I have. All right, so now that we have our day rates and our half day rates set, now let's start talking about editing. Now, whether you are working with an editor or you are editing the project, you're gonna wanna budget to your client the editing time it takes. It's very important to do it on an hourly basis. So the way I normally do is based on the project scope that they give me, I give them an idea of how many hours of editing I think it's gonna take. Now, if I personally think it's going to take, let's say eight hours to edit it, then I wanna budget like 10 hours to actually edit it. The additional hours are there just in case you have a little bit of back and forth with your clients. Also, you never know when you're gonna run into little issues with your edit, and so it's always good to give yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room throughout your editing time. So, hourly rates are always gonna be gauged on how well you edit. So, for example, I would consider myself a very fast editor. So because I'm a very fast editor, then I actually charge a little bit more than probably some other editors out there. The benefit to my clients are they actually get their projects done a lot sooner versus someone else who charges significantly less but takes significantly longer. See, the truth of the matter is they end up spending about the same amount. I just can do it in a shorter amount of time, which brings them more value because now they have the project back in their hands. All right, so now that we have it all broken down as far as the money that you're gonna take home, now let's get into the big aspect of it, and that is additional expenses. Now, how do I normally handle additional expenses? Basically, I budget them in to charge to the client. Now, this part here is very important um, because when you're working with certain clients, they're gonna have these crazy ideas for their videos. They always think to the max, and you kinda want them to because you wanna be able to kind of have these grand ideas and then it's your job as the videographer to actually bring those ideas to life or scale them down to where they're actually doable. So when they come to you and they ask for things like, you know, nice houses or fancy cars or models or, you know, makeup or whatever the additional expenses are, it's your job to try to bring all that stuff together and then present them a budget and it's very important to give them a lined budget because at the end of the day, they need to know where their money's going, especially if they're gonna approve this final budget. For my final little tip as far as how you should be charging your clients, this is more on the negotiation side. Now, how many times have you called someone or someone called you about a job and then you guys start talking about budget and it goes something like this. I can do your job for $500. Ooh, well my budget's not really designed for $500. Can you do it for four? Uh, four is a little low. Um, I guess I can do it for 450. Nah, I really need it done for about four. Well, okay, I guess I can do it for four this time, but next time it'll be five. All right, that works for me. You say, okay, cool, that works for me. And you say, wow, I only lost $100 on that job. Win, no, not a win, not even close to a win. It's a loss. Let me tell you why it's a loss. Because you've just devalued your work by $100. Now, in this situation, it's only $100, but how many times have we done this for a lot more than $100? I know personally, I used to deal with this haggling back and forth all the time till I got to a point where initially, I was pricing my work higher knowing people were going to want to haggle me down. And so this is how I tell you the best way to haggle. Instead of haggling price for the same amount of work, haggle the work itself. So for example, if you tell somebody, I can make your video for $500, and they say, well, I really can't afford 500, I can only afford 400, then what you should do is re-scope the amount of work you're doing to where it's actually $400 worth of work. So that means, shooting for you know two less hours or if that means you know getting rid of you know a certain type of edit that you had in mind or if that means 
it's gonna take longer to actually get the video done because you're gonna put more videos in higher priority to their video. It's your job to not devalue yourself and your work, but more so to just do less on their project so that way when they haggle down the price, you are at the same time haggling down the work. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. I thought, hope you guys learned a little bit from it. Uh, I know this is kind of very rambly, but in, you know, in this topic, it's very difficult to really get down to how much you should be charging. This is something that you're gonna continue to work on, but I tell most people to really start with how much money you want to bring in off every shoot and then base everything from there. So find out what your half day rate is worth, find out what your full day rate is worth, and then once you do that, you will feel good about just about any shoot you actually go out and do. So with all this being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you thought it was helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss the future videos I have coming out just like this and with a lot more topics. And please do me a favor, hit that little bell down there because YouTube is not sending my video out to all of my subscribers. So if you guys don't want to miss one of my videos, hit that little bell so that way YouTube knows that you guys like this channel and that you guys want to see more content from me so YouTube can continue to spread my videos out. I'd really appreciate it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.